What is up, YouTube? Welcome to a happy Friday here. Um, I was challenged. I'm not working today at my day job, and I was challenged by the girl to get some painting done. So I haven't done that in way too long. It's almost been a full month since I painted. So that's the goal. I have until three o'clock to get a painting done. I think I'm going to work on my uh, hipster um, king series. Uh, I'll link something up here on what that is and let's just do it but first I'm all scratchy and ugh. so I'm gonna clean up and then start painting let's do this thing oh ah that feels better so let's get the studio set up and uh, the other part of the challenge was she wanted a painting of a robin. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Shut up, Rory. Rory wants to go outside so bad because there's so many birds, actually robins out there. It's not even funny. So I know what you're thinking. Robin, hipster king. Robin, hipster king. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna be a little tricky. I'm gonna break the rules. Because a creative person should always break the rules. Yes, I am doing a Robin Hipster King. As in Batman and Robin. Ha, a little fan art there. Um, so let's get to it. Finally ready in the studio. Got my brushes, got my paints. I just wanna talk a couple seconds on, on um, my palette and how I arrange it. Acrylics, I usually use paper plates and they are disposable. They are cheap and um, acrylics tend to dry fast and hard uh, so they're hard to scrape off glass like uh, I use for my oil paintings. And uh, I'm using a pretty simple palette here. Um, I'll just go through the colors. Uh, I do use Mainly uh, goldens because um, I like them. Uh, I do still have some Liquitex from college. Yes, they're that old, and um, I'm just trying to use them up on on, on these so I can try to get my whole whole setup on goldens. But start here with titanium white. White's always needed. Then a cadmium light yellow. And we got a yellow ochre. I, as you can see, I kind of go from light to darker with my palette. I don't necessarily do the green, um, the red before the yellows and you know, go in um, regular uh, rainbow orientation. But uh, then, then we have Cadmium uh, light red. We got alizarin crimson. Uh, I do like to use the pure hues, not the um, not the uh, hued version of that, which is a, usually a synthetic paint. Um, then we have uh, sap green. Uh, sometimes I use a vermilion or whatever, but I, I like sap green the best. And some kind of blue. Uh, today I am using Prussian blue, uh, but I have known to use phthalo blue, um, ultramarine blue, and a couple other blues. Um, but for today's exercise, I am using Prussian blue. And then this whole other space is all, all open for mixing. Um, with acrylics, I do have a spray bottle handy where uh, if I'm not using it, I will just mist really lightly just to keep uh, some humidity on the paint uh, so they don't dry out as fast. Um, but you don't want to get them sopping, otherwise they're just all messy. And I do have a glass of water. Uh, I have a specific glass because God knows uh, most artists have drinking, drank in their um, paint water and some of these pigments are toxic. Uh, when ingested, so you don't want to do that. 
specifically the cadmiums and the heavy metal ones, the cobalts and stuff like that. So um, you will notice I am not uh, using any black in this palette. Uh, and the reason is I feel black is too strong of a color mostly. Uh, and you can create quality dark blacks uh, with the cadmium and the sap green and sometimes with the blue in any combination. If you want a warm black, you go more um, the crimson and the sap green. Otherwise, if you want it a little cooler, you mix in a little um, Prussian blue or, or ultramarine, whatever you have, one of the darker blues. Um, and it makes a beautiful black. And you can also uh, add burnt sienna or some other browns. Um, I know Van Dyke brown is a popular one to make um, nice, rich blacks. And, you know, sometimes you have to layer over and layer over to get exactly the darkness you want. Or you can use those combinations and use a little bit of black. Um, I both have, I do own black because I like to use it in, in, um, uh, to make green, believe it or not. It's a great thing. I have ivory black in the Liquitex. Again, this is pretty old paint. So um, then I have um, Mars black uh, in the golden. Uh, but uh, I will do a demo of how to make beautiful natural greens with black and uh, cadmium yellow light at some point. Well, today. Um, yeah, there you have it. That's the palette. So let's get started. Um, I'm going to use an array of small brushes because I'm painting small today. As you can see, uh, this will be a coaster painting. This is a New Belgian a slow rider coaster. I have a billion of these, I swear to God. Hipster King. Why do I do a series called Hipster King? Hipsters kind of have this kind of weird anti um, negative connotation. Uh, I live lived in the hip area of um, Minneapolis for many, many, many years, and um, hipsters and kind of their their culture. Um, it was a mainstay, um, and you know, kind of the cool kids maybe, you know, or they think they're the cool kids. Style is very interesting, kind of taking from many different uh, subcultures, uh, specifically kind of the punk music scene cultures of Minneapolis. Uh, Minneapolis is known for the hipsters. And, uh, blue ribbon drinking, funky whatever style, um, which is fine. I don't, I don't have anything wrong with them. Um, uh, got some friends who probably would shoot me if I even called them a hipster, but they kind of are some of those goofy, goofy subcultures that the kids were doing for a long time, and, you know, whatever. But I kind of liked the the charm of of what they 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 were becoming. They're kind of don't give a f leave me alone bullshit uh, attitude, you know. And I thought they needed they needed a king, and so I kind of started doing these little little goofy paintings that uh, kind of reflect kind of this subculture of style. And style was always big with them. I started thinking, what would a hipster king really look like? And top hats and crowns and lapels. And they became kind of a Victorian vibe in, in, in these little paintings. Uh, kind of, kind of real hipster meets cyberpunk. Can I say that? Anybody agree with me? Uh, let me know what you guys think. Um, the, you know, the recycled clothes in the Victorian vibe kind of just kind of work together. And they all, all of my little paintings like this, they, 
they, they, they tend to have badges and or feathers and or flowers or some goofy that funky hairdos, beards, oh, beards, man, it's amazing. They have rubbed off on, on popular culture, like everybody even at work, all bearded and stuff. I mean, that's one of the reasons I I didn't I don't wear a beard a lot, but sometimes I do, and you know, the goatee is kind of a thing. And as always, I just kind of block things in to start out with, kind of do some layers and just kind of kind of establish some things going here, and not get too worried about where it's at and if I like it or not. The early part of the painting should always be kind of loose. Establish, just establish kind of like colors, lights and darks. So how am I gonna make Robin a hipster? Well, Robin's young, so I'm gonna keep Robin in that kind of young looking thing. So I'm not gonna do like a beard or anything, but I'm gonna kind of push for some of the other elements in in what we have for Robin here. Robin's always kind of a little feminine in, in my brain. So this, this character is definitely kind of turning into a, uh, I won't say female version, but it might be. One thing with acrylic, you can work in an area and if you're not liking what's going on, it's sort of like pushing and pulling for hours. You can let it dry for a bit and work somewhere else in the composition. Then it eventually go back in and it's easier to work. So that's why I'm kind of popping around and moving around and just kind of refining. And again, I'm, I'm not going for realism or, or anything like that. In my brain, painting is, should be a painting. If I want something realistic, I'll pull up my camera and do a photo. The painterly painting is something I like more. It's Robin Curious Sword. I kind of want to what him or her. That's just call it they. Maybe super, super weird and politically correct. Robin just, just doesn't know what Robin is and is trying to find him or herself, which is awesome. Who is Robin anyway? It's all about detail sometimes. You know, you can, you can go about things and just do it quick and simple. If you don't have the detail, it really makes your paintings look amateurish. And don't be afraid to use colors that are unexpected in your art because that adds visual interest. So I'm putting green in the hair, even though it's mostly blue, but I kind of want something to just kind of tie some of the other colors in and just give that just a little something extra. Mr. Robin, there you have it. Challenge complete. Hmm. There you have it. Cheers. I wasn't going to drink it. This stuff's horrible for you. Anyway, I'm gonna be back in the studio as much as I can, uh, despite work. Um, I would love to hear what you're creating right now. I'm assuming if you're watching me, you're painting. Why don't you drop a link below? Let me see your stuff. Uh, I'd love to see what the people who actually care about what I'm doing, is doing. So uh, let me know if I am not following you already. Um, do all those good things that YouTubers like to tell you that and you know, press the button and you know, ring that bell um, if you want. Uh, I'm going to try to do a good series on how to become an artist. Uh, the steps you should probably start thinking about um, before you actually start doing your thing and how to get into all the things you want so you know hey you need more art in the world there's too much crap